Welcome to Elite at level Monastery the Scorpion. This one can be pretty tough not to do Elite at level, so I thought it'd be a good one to do video out of. Plus, it's got some some puzzles that can be confusing if you're new to it. I'll be using the wolf in this video. Just like my other recent videos, this is not ginger spice, this is a secondary druid that I have that I was just using as a stand-in while I was working on ginger's past lives, but I thought I'd use her to do some videos since she's at a level where there's a lot of a lot of higher end heroic quests that I could do videos out of. So down here it's just a, a, a loop basically and there's just tons of traps. If you don't have a trapper you shouldn't even bother with this. And if you come in here at level elite, make sure you have a trapper that has really good trapping skills and really good spot. Uh, and these these traps hit pretty hard for for at level. There's just a bunch of scorpions down there too that are that are stealthing. There's also uh, there's also a shrine area that has a chest. It's a junk chest, doesn't contain any named loot, but there is that extra shrine which can be nice. If you're coming in here with a group, it's great to have uh, a trapper that can not only do that area, but there are some pretty hard-hitting traps uh, throughout the whole quest, but can be soloed. Evasion helps. Unfortunately, I have neither evasion nor trapping skills. So we're just going to tough it out. Um, most of the traps that appear... in this quest are going to be in these archway door areas like you see right in front of me they're blade traps that are going to pop out of the floor and they do hit pretty hard so you want to avoid them and the easiest way to do that is when you're going through any kind of archway like this just jump I can't even remember which archways have it, or if it's fixed or random, but those uh, those blades will pop out of the ground, out of the floor, in other places, in at least one other place. And so you want to go around the area looking for little rooms that have pressure plates like this and levers and valves. And that's going to open, um, will ultimately open the way to, to continue, but you know, it may open another room that has another valve that you had to, got to hit, or it may open the way to um, like a chest area or something. Okay, so at that time. <laughs> And my wolf went straight into the traps and, and got killed. So these barriers come up and they just through time they come right back down like you just saw. So I'm going to show you something about timing traps. Um, if you're not aware, this is good to know for any any traps really, any kind of physical traps that. You know, you can move into them once they're up. You just don't want to be in them when they come up. So I'm sure you could just walk right through. You can jump over them, but um, you know, just wait till they pop and then just run right through them, like so. Or you can just jump over them. They can still hit you. That's pretty. It's a pretty good jump.
Earthquake is going to work really well in here uh, when you have groups, but a lot of the mobs in here are going to just exist in you know, one or two caster casters at a time. There are also these mockery monks that uh, have pretty high reflex saves, so it's not going to be so good against them. On you go pot, could use the extra hit points in case you get hit by a trap. So this room is open now, it wasn't before. Hit that pressure plate. So you can see my my call lightning's one-shotting some of these mobs, and that's one of the points that I've emphasized that time it didn't, didn't crit. Um, on the forums, a lot of people, when they're thinking about druids or they play druids, they sort of fall into what I would call a trap of using finger of death. And I don't feel like it makes a lot of sense to use finger of death on a druid, because um, one, it it's a spell that requires a... Um, got hit by a trap for 238. Uh, it requires a spell resistance, or a spell penetration check. And druids only have two spells that require a spell pen check. And that's, uh, at least that you're going to use in elemental form. It's uh, Finger of Death and Word of Balance. And they're, they're both good spells, but because you only have two, it's not really worth investing in spell penetration ability uh, just for two spells. And you have so many other spells to use. Now in heroic levels, right up through, you know, level 19 right now, you can use Call Lightning to one-shot so many mobs. And it's an SLA, and so you're casting it for six spell points. And you have so many other SLAs too, like your, your um, Creeping Cold and your Greater Creeping Cold. Those don't have any spell, spell pen checks, and they also cannot be evaded. So they're really they're taking the bad the damage no matter what, unless they're resistant or immune to cold. So now this uh, this area is open, uh, and we can go in here. This is a little tricky, though, especially if you don't have some with good evasion or a trapper. Now there is a trap box somewhere around here. Sometimes it could be right here on the outside. Um, sometimes it can be right up here up top, or it can be out there somewhere. And this is a re reverse gravity chamber. So when you go out there, you're going to float up to the ceiling right away. Um, if you get the trap box, it'll stop. Well, what you gotta do, uh, I did not mean to go out there yet. <laughs> what you gotta do is you gotta float over and flip that, and toggle that, uh, that floor puzzle tile switch right over there. And when you toggle that, it will trigger a trap that's gonna drop a gelatinous cube or two onto you. It's going to drop you and the gelatinous cubes, and you're going to find them down below. And it also makes these girders here break out. Um, and the significance of that is that it won't, if those girders break out, you're not going to be able to flip that lever. And there's another one right down there that you can sort of jump out and feather fall onto. And it's not a big deal. If you can get both of those levers, there's an extra chest down there that you can just barely see right there. But if you could get the trap, 
then it, it will allow you to get those lovers and not have to deal with the gelatinous cubes. And if you have someone with evasion, they can just, you know, jump out there into the anti-gravity chamber and easily go right over and hit that um, floor tile switch. We don't have that luxury, so what you have to do is very gingerly just sort of um, move out there and hope that you don't bump into any kind of like corner or anything because you can control yourself really well as long as you don't hit a corner or something that's going to make you lose um, or it's going to give you some inertia that you cannot lose like right now I by moving into the corner or hitting something uh, it has made me start moving and I cannot control um, I cannot make it stop and I can't go back down here try to reset it so now I just have to make my way over there but luckily self-healing so as I'm going through the traps I could just heal myself no big deal but these these spikes do a lot of damage so you don't want to play around and just flip that and those girders are breaking out now comes a gelatinous cube to him. Now if you're doing this and you had gotten traps in that first area and open up the way to that shrine room, then if you did not have somebody who could detour, you would want to use that shrine room before you fell down, because there's not going to be another way up there without recalling out, and then you lose XP. Same thing down here, there can be traps in those uh, archway doors, and I don't remember which ones have them or if they're static or not. So here, there's um, I can't remember if it's that wall or this wall, but there's a, a secret door there. Um, but unfortunately, we're not gonna be able to get it. And that would open the way to a valve that would turn the water on, that would allow us to get an extra chest in another area down here. That's just a junk chest, so no big deal that we're losing it. So just one shot at that wizard with call lightning did 1400 damage to him. Also, the, the druid doesn't have a lot of necro spells, so um, I think it's just finger of death. There might be be another one though. I can't, I can't think of right now. But it's nothing I just and so it doesn't make sense to invest in in necro abilities. So the, the finger of death I just don't think makes a whole lot of sense on a druid. If you have a ton of past lives in wizard um, and so you have you know your favorite soul and you already have good spell pen built in because of your past lives um, that could be helpful and you know if you're doing heroic level stuff you can, you can use Finger of Death uh, somewhat effectively, but I, I I don't even think you should get in the habit of using it as a druid. This puzzle here in the next room 
is not completable. The floor is just going to drop out, and that's going to be one of the extra chests I was talking about. And I'll just show you. The floor will always drop out before you can complete it. So, if we had found that uh, secret door and turned on the valve, and turned on the water, the water level here would be above these spikes, which is, would allow us to swim up, and then one of these, it's that um, south wall up there, is another secret door that you can open this chest back there. No big deal. Hit this lever, and it will make these air jets blow you up. And there's a gelatinous cube in the in the shaft, so that's a lot of fun when you're you and your your party mates are bouncing up and down in there, uh, and you got the gelatinous cube to deal with, and then it's it's, it's paralyzing people as they're bouncing up and down, and then uh, you, you know you take damage when you fly up into the ceiling, so it could be a little tricky of a chamber to deal with sometimes with some groups, but um, a little trick is when you're down there and you're coming up. You want to face to the west and, and push to the west as you're being blown up, and that way you'll catch this ledge pretty much every time. Um, otherwise, it, you know you, you might get blown up and down several times before you can get lucky enough to catch that ledge. Ooh, I got lucky there. <laughs> Time to start using some of these mana clickies. regular spell has a cooldown time of two seconds. Now, I mostly use just the SLA, but if you need to rapid fire, you can. And with the cooldown time of, of two seconds, blast away. Um, Finger Death on a on a uh, Druid has a cooldown time of eight seconds, and I I don't want to wait that time for a spell to come off cooldown.
So there's a little puzzle. Uh, it can be confusing if you've not done it before. Uh, basically what you need to do is just light all the colors here so you can bring down this blue barrier. And that's the first part. So, you want to not turn on the light uh, because until you get it the way that you want to because you get these air jets that can knock you around. It can be kind of annoying. Okay, so uh, this barrier is down now. Now, there are a bunch of levers that you want to pull. And I'm going to show you how to maneuver your way around this area. Now, these colored runes all can have air jets that blow out of them that can help you navigate uh, this area. So like for example, if th this yellow one has an air jet that shoots out that way, and if you stand here in front of it and jump, it'll shoot you over that wall, which is where you need to be, uh, or where you need to get, because one of, the, one of the levers is over there. Similarly, over here, um, and this one's on, the red one's on, we're going to stand in front of it, and it blows us right over get this lever. Another lever there. And we could have just walked over to it if we came from the other side, but we can also snow slide to it. Now this right here actually toggles that light up top as well. So if I turn it this way, it will turn off all the jets. Here's another one of the levers you need to hit. One left. And that was to the right when we had first come in. And it was the yellow rune that needed to be lit. So what you want to do is route the light so that one of the yellow gems is lit, and then that will turn on that air jet. So we can do like either that gem or that gem. They don't have to both be lit. doing the end fight a little bit differently because I am alone uh, and so actually we'll miss out on an extra chest careful not to get blown up there because I'm going to take you to the, the end fight and I'm going to get rid of the dog because he's just going to probably die with. 
and this boss is one of the tougher heroic bosses in the game. Um, he is pretty hard. So I'm gonna drink another Con Yugo pot. So all the extra hit points will be welcome. And the boss is Sinyasi, he's a drow scorpion. He's stealthing just up ahead, so he can really aggro on us anytime. I'm going to show you how a group will normally do it, because um, if you've never had a, a tune that can kite him around, you may not realize what was happening. What you want to make sure that you do is you stay away from these pressure plates here, because they're going to turn on these dancing balls from this point on. So if you're kiting him or just moving up here, so normally what you want to do is you want to send in your kiter, have him grab Sinyasi's aggro and then take him into that far chamber into the upper levels and just run him around, being careful not to trigger or to step on any of the pressure plates or to lead Sinyasi anywhere where he would step on the pressure plates. Then everybody else would move forward and there's a puzzle up there. And it's kind of a unique floor tile puzzle because, or not a floor tile puzzle, but like a pressure plate puzzle. We have to toggle all of the lights on. But it's different than most of the other ones like it in the game because it has some spaces that are missing and it's random. There is a solver on Cubicle Ninja that's really good. Um, the frustrating part is that you know by the time you set it up and you set all the lights the way they are, there's trash that continuously respawns and it can mess it up and it becomes a whole process. So first you send in your kiter, takes the boss up top, then everybody else goes in. The, the person working on the puzzle starts on that, and everybody else is going to keep the aggro of the trash off of um, the person doing the puzzle. And they want to make sure not to draw the aggro of Sinyasi. So the person kiting Sinyasi, it's important that they they do whatever they need to do to hold the aggro, it damage him a little bit, whatever. So I I'm not I haven't devised a way to try to do the puzzle and. Uh, deal with Sinyasi because he's just going to run all over it. Or at least not in an efficient way. You know, I'm sure if I you know, took him up, jumped down, did it a little bit, but with all the trash, it's just going to be too difficult. So we're just going to kill him. But I just want to take him up here to show you that this is where you, know, you can kite him around. But there are all these pressure plates, so it's really tricky. don't really want to bring him down here because then he's just going to aggro on the people down here. But we don't have anybody else, so just find a convenient spot to fight him. I'm actually going to be in water elemental form. The healing over time spells are going to be huge here um, because he just does so much big damage. And so it's a good demonstration to show that you, know, you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this guy. He does not damage, so it's not like you could just stand there and take the hits. I mean, you definitely got to heal through it. But um, there are a lot of builds that, that mean this guy is just going to one or two hit him, and then it's over.
be losing out on an extra chest because we're killing Sunyasi instead of doing the floor puzzle. And that chest does have a rune that you can use to do your dragon touch. But we'll, we'll get one chest that has a rune anyway, so I just really wanted to show that it is soloable on this build and go over the puzzle and stuff. Here, get your chest, and that'll complete the quest. And here's the extra chest that we're not getting. If we had done the puzzle and not killed Sinyasi, then we would get that. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about the build or about the quest, feel free to send me a tell if you're on Sarlona, or you can uh, respond to my forum post or YouTube video and stuff continually respawns here, so if you have D-Door, that's really helpful.